everybody. Welcome to our new Sunday talk show, The World This Week. This week, we saw elections in Thailand. As we speak, Thai citizens are voting, but in the streets of Bangkok, more and more tension and violence. The State of the Union address promising even more Washington infights. Say yes. Give America a raise. Egypt, a new president. Will this mean a new chapter? In Russia, all set for the Winter Olympics. Will Vladimir Putin be a winner or a loser? And even angry birds are spying on you. Now the cyber wars are everywhere. These are some of the issues we'll touch upon this Sunday. We spoke with Robert Satloff, the executive director of the Washington Institute, and we started with the new president in Egypt. I think the Obama administration made a decision recently um, to try to improve uh, relations with this new, new Egypt, to recognize that what occurred over the summer is the new normal in Egypt, that this is, uh, there, there's not going back to the elected presidency of Mohamed Morsi. Um, we're not going back to the Muslim Brotherhood as a central player in the political system in Egypt. Um, it's just not happening. And so the administration, uh, I think quite rightly and quite intelligently, came to grips with reality. Now, um, the Egyptians have got to take um, and play their role in this process as well. It's one thing to view the Muslim Brotherhood as a threat to the Egyptian political system. It's something else to view all politics as a threat to the Egyptian stability. Syria, what is the American policy there? I mean, is Assad a partner or a one-man super magnet for terrorism who has committed war crimes? And these are John Kerry's words this week. I think all American policy in Syria flows from a determination by President Obama uh, that this is a conflict in which we are not going to get involved. A uh, conflict in which um, either the stakes aren't high enough, in which the divisions between the parties are too murky, in which there's not enough uh, clarity between who's a good guy and who's a bad guy. I happen to disagree with this policy. Um, I think that we've made a series of mistakes and uh, miscalculations for the last number of years, uh, where we could have made a big difference in Syria two, three years ago, we could have avoided where we are today with um, a modicum of um, American engagement to train and equip the opposition. Well, you know, according to recent polls, most Israelis have little faith in uh, Kerry's efforts to bring peace uh, with the Palestinians. Uh, are they wrong, would you say? If you look at the trajectory of American policy toward uh, Israel and the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, there is definitely a shift. I mean, where the Obama administration was in 2009 was a confrontational approach toward Israel, making a cessation, a freeze of settlement activity, the first step in any diplomacy in terms of uh, the Palestinian issue. That was a disaster. That led to no progress. The president in this term has a different approach, and John Kerry has a different approach. It's a much more cooperative approach. Um, an approach which begins with trying to ask the Israelis, what do you need? And John Kerry went about trying to secure for Israel these two achievements. It's a very different approach. Now, whether you think it'll, uh, it'll, it'll unlock the key to a resolution, I don't know. Neither do I. Robert Sattler, thank you very much. You're welcome. All is set for the opening ceremony of the Winter Olympics in Russia this coming Friday. With us from Sochi, Russia, is Alex Gilody, a member of the International Olympic Committee. We say hello to you, Alex, in Sochi. Hi, Jacob. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. You give us some sense of last-minute preparations over there. Well, there is a week to go yet, and the athlete starts to gather here. Uh, security is tight, as you can expect, and uh, everything so far is working uh, very close to perfection. But we have a week to go to the opening ceremony, but who counts how long it is to go to the opening? I always count how long is it to the uh, closing ceremony. Yes, obviously. Do you share the enormous security concerns over there? 
I uh, share security concerns all over the world, uh, especially in the place that you are sitting now in Tel Aviv mm -hmm. is no less uh, dangerous. Uh, since 1972, the International Olympic Committee has put security at the top of our priority for the safe of the athletes. You know, uh, U.S. President Obama canceled his trip. Putin is taking center stage. Is it politics and Olympics all over again together? Mixed? No, oh, absolutely not. Uh, the role and goal of the International Olympic Committee is to assemble the athletes of the world together to one place, not the leaders of the world. But uh, I want to remind you that uh, President Obama was not in Vancouver four years ago, was not in London two years ago. Actually, he was never in the Olympic Games. Uh, we will have here the president of uh, China, Xi Jinping, the prime minister of Japan, Mr. Abe, and I'm told 52 heads of states, but that is not the important thing. We will have the athletes of the world assembling and competing for the best, most important prize in sport. Right. Well, you have, uh, Alex, so much experience also as a broadcaster yourself. So give us some tips what, what uh, to look for this time in the Olympics. Well, uh, it may not uh, be well known as sports in the country where you are uh, broadcasting from, yeah, it's but sunny it here. is the most spectacular uh, um, athleticism on snow and ice. And I think everything that the young people of today are doing with the uh, snowboards, uh, what they can do in, in uh, uh, short track, and the way the speed they are going down the hill, Everything is something that uh, one would uh, want to enjoy because it's beautiful, beautiful sports. Yes, indeed. Well, uh, good luck there in Sochi. Thank you very much, Alex Gildi. Thank you. The Russian name Kaspersky is a synonym for cybersecurity. Mr. Eugene Kaspersky, founder of Kaspersky Inc., is here in Israel for the International Cyber Conference. Welcome to our show, Mr. Kaspersky. Oh, thank you so much. That's a pleasure. Let's talk cyber wars. How do you rank uh, Israel uh, in this business and Russia? Uh, well, the reality is that many nations, uh, they already announced that they have a military cyber divisions. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that uh, some uh, of them already have uh, cyber weapons. Uh, still, they don't use it. And I think it's a very good idea because uh, cyber weapons, they're extremely dangerous, not only because they are weapons, uh, but also the fact is that uh, it's very easy to learn and copy paste. And uh, I'm afraid of the other nations which will be copy-pasting their cyber warfare. Right. But since you're here in Israel, so tell us what's your impression about the Israeli part of this business? <laughs> of course, I don't know the details, but uh, Israel is very well known as a very, uh, well, very developed uh, country in IT, uh, in security, and I'm pretty sure that you have enough of arms in your hands. Are we heading towards a World War III in cyberspace, as some say? I believe it's very dangerous because we depend on IT. It's everywhere. There are power plants, power grids, transportation, healthcare. Uh, so if uh, there is uh, some visible damage on these systems, actually we, we will get back to the pre-internet time. So uh, how do you contain it? I mean, you know, when, when there's weapon, people use it. Unfortunately, yes. Uh, from time to time, there are such weapons which are used by people. But uh, remember, there are such a things as uh, nuclear weapons. Uh, chemical weapons, uh, biological weapons, which are simply forbidden. And I hope that very soon governments will agree not to use cyber weapons and make cyber weapons forbidden as well. Oh, that's an interesting analogy. I mean, uh, you think cyber uh, uh, weapons is as dangerous as a nuclear or biological? Uh, once again, if we are in a cyber war, I think that the damage, the possible damage on the whole world will be as huge, as big as, as a real third world war. Mm. Do you mind if countries like Iran or North Korea use Kaspersky technology? Well, unfortunately, it's not possible to forbid them because the software is software. And actually, these nations, uh, they use also Microsoft software. They, have, they use the uh, same IT systems, same applications, and it's not possible to make it forbidden. Actually, there is, it's not possible to, pre to uh, develop borders in the cyberspace. Mm. Were you surprised by the scope of the NSA spying? Uh, well, honestly speaking, I was really surprised to see the scale of the espionage campaigns. And I'm afraid it's uh, dangerous as well, because it damaged trust between nations. 
it damage trust, it means that the nations will force will be forced to invest more into the local IT, into the local internet segments. And it means that the global internet companies, global cyber companies will have less investment. It means that their cyber evolution will slow down, and I don't really mm. like it. Uh, well, and it's everywhere. How people can protect themselves against it? Well, well they're talking about uh, spying on uh, nations or spying on individuals. There are two different things. And if you're talking about uh, collecting data about uh, individuals, well, actually, it's, it's violate privacy, of course. Uh, but, well, there are some uh, ideas, technologies which can protect people from this. Uh, it's possible. Mm. Tell me, wouldn't you like to uh, meet with Edward Snowden in Moscow when you have a chance? No. No? No, no way. I'm afraid that uh, he is not uh, the best person in the world uh, which I want to, which I really want to meet. Uh, not Edward Snowden. Well, okay, so let's talk hobbies now. Uh, did you drive a Formula One car? <laughs> well, no. unfortunately, unfortunately, you can drive Formula One car only if you're under 75 kilos. That's not my story. I'm really sorry. Mm. No, you can diet, you know. Mr. Kaspersky, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Todaraba. And finally, we have a special privilege to talk to the Italian astronaut Angelo Nespoli, who is here in Israel for a few events during Space Week. So we say hello, we say hello to you, Mr. Nespoli. Mr. Elon, uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you tonight. Great, today. I see you have a very nice flight suit. Tell me about it. Well, it's a flight suit. It's uh, the suit that we actually used to fly on the NASA jet. And uh, they actually used to fly with this suit in space. Today we use uh, a different uh, suit, but we still, we still uh, uh, use it because it has a lot of emblems, uh, insignia, and uh, it shows that uh, we are astronauts. You've been to space both on an American shuttle, Discovery, and on a Russian Soyuz, right? That's correct, yes. Well, well tell me, what, what's the difference between the two cars? Well, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's very interesting because if you fly on the shuttle, you, you work with the Americans and train with the Americans. It's like, uh, you know, getting uh, the most uh, of the best and the top of everything. Uh, and as a Western culture, we do try to always uh, go a step uh, beyond. So we go always to the limit and possibly a little bit more. So the, I would compare the shuttle to a kind of a space Ferrari where, ah. you know, you can do a lot of things. It goes as fast as possible, as it's the top of the top of the top. Well, the, the Soyuz, uh, it's, uh, it's really interesting. I kind of looked at it when I started training, thinking, uh, are we sure this is going to fly? I mean, are we sure <laughs> we are supposed to go inside, inside this and, and fly? And, uh, and so there's a little bit of skepticism. So the bottom line is that uh, you have a Ferrari there, but sometimes you just need a, li a little Fiat 500 to do what you need to do, and this is good. Uh, how did you use your hobby as a photographer over there? Well, uh, photography has been uh, one of my passions that I had always uh, since I was a kid. And it was uh, interesting when I was in space, uh, the fact that you have at, at your disposal all these uh, huge uh, cameras with the latest equipment and you have uh, one of the best model available there every time, which is the Earth. So every, every minute or so, the, the, it changes clothes uh, that you go from the oceans to the deserts to the mountains to the islands to the Caribbeans to Australia to India very fast. You go from winter to summer to spring. You know, it, it's amazing. I yeah. think for a photographer being on there, it's just being in heaven. Yeah. And you knew another guest in the uh, space program, Israeli astronaut Ilan Ramon. Tell, tell me about it. Well, I was uh, fortunate enough uh, to be selected in the uh, class of 1998 uh, of astronaut, the 17th uh, class of American astronaut. And Ilan Ramon was trained with this class too. So we shared for uh, about a couple of years uh, uh, the training uh, settings, uh, classroom. We did a lot of uh, things together. It was really, really interesting. Ilan was one of the first one from our class to be assigned to a space flight. And it was a joy for everybody. Finally, somebody from our class was flying in space and of course uh, uh, it was uh, it was a terrible tragedy when we all uh, heard that uh, there was an accident there and uh, and all the crew member actually perished in space well 
Finally, Paolo, well, what are your plans in Israel? Tell us a little about it. Oh, I, it's my first uh, visit in Israel, finally. I mean, I've been in the Middle East, but never to Israel. And uh, my plans are uh, to follow the Lan Ramon uh, conference with all the people that are here, exchange uh, uh, information. I always found uh, young people that are eager to learn, eager to put themselves to the test, eager to, to do. Uh, and I challenge them, telling them what we are doing in space, telling them that astronauts are not extraterrestrial people. Well, for a while, while they are outside, they are extraterrestrial. But when they come back, they are regular people. You don't need to be Superman, superheroes, super God knows what. You're just a regular guy that goes in space and does your work, and, and everybody can do that. Well. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank Delonis you. Poli. Thank Bye. you. And this has been The World This Week. We'll see you here next Sunday. Have a good week.